thoughts there. It remains to get routing going. Um, why do we need routing going? Just a quick recap again. If we go and ping uh, 2101 from PC1, so that's going from PC1 to PC3, there is no root. It does not know how to do it. So that's why we need some routing. So I said very early on in tutorial one, I think uh, this was step 11 or 12, hey, you know, let's do this um, statically first um, before we set up OSPF. So let's grab the two of these. Let's see our routing tables. So I've done, I've taken the liberty of doing a run show IP route because I'm in configure mode here. And we can see we've got the directly connected routes. There's our VLANs, there's our actual interfaces, and then there's a loopback. Yep. Same down here on the Cisco. You know, we have no routes. So hence why that ping didn't work. So it's very simple to get this working. Um, we want to go conf T. And on the Cisco, so the Cisco is this side. The, if I just dump that down there, the left hand side is going from the 172 network over to the 192. So, in order to do that, we want to go um, IP root, it's a good start. We're going to root and we're going to go to 192.168.0.0 because that will capture all of 1 through to 254 here. Um, on that third octet and we want to go to 255.255.252.0 and how it gets there is through 10.0.0.1 so that's how it's going to get there and if I go exit okay and that's it been set up now if we go a show IP route, we can now see we have a static route. Now you're probably sat there going, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on a second, Eamon. What, uh, what, what, where precisely did this, this 22 come from? Well, we know we want to go to 192.168.1, 192 192.168.2, 192.168.3. We want to go to those three networks. Um, so rather than set up three static routes, I've used what's called route summarization, and I've gone to 192.168.0.0, but with a mask of 22, it will grab those other networks. And we're going to use route summarization up here as well. So on our Viata, we're going to go set protocols, uh, static, root. There's lots of reasons I should point out for root summarization, but you can see already just from this simple example how efficient it is because we only need one static root, not three static roots. So it's cut down our work for us. And this is going to 172.16.0.0 and we're going to do a slash 22 on here as well. It's next hop. It's interesting when you compare the, the two machines. You, you can see the similarities in syntax, um, but they are you know, slightly different between the two. And that's going via the 10.0.0.2 connection. We're going to commit that. And hopefully we now have, whoops, if I could drag this up. This is PC1. And whoops. And if we now ping Is it going to find it? It's timing out. Ah, there you go. So it timed out for the first couple and then it grabbed it. So now if we grab PC4 and we go 1722, it's gone. So there you go. That's a static route. So let's tear down that static route now um, and show that we've torn it down. So to get rid of it, uh, well, just bring the, on, on the Vias, it's slightly different. On this one, you have to go um, delete protocols static root. Commit that. Yeah, run show IP root. There you go, we're back to where we were. Nothing configured. On this one, you're going to conf T again and bring up the old command 
and it's slightly easier on the Cisco in that you just go, no, exit out of that. And if we show the routing table, it's gone. So now we go back here, can't get to it, unreachable, which is perfect. That's what we want to see. So now we want to quickly set up OSPF. So welcome back to the final part. So I'm just diving in here. Uh, I've done a conf T and router OSPF one. Um, so that identifies that we're starting up an OSPF. We want to say, because we're now going to start up OSPF dynamic routing between these devices. Um, it's from the 10 network. And you have to give it a wildcard, not a mask. Uh, wildcard are the bits that it will examine. So three is fine. Um, and we'll call this, what are we going to call it? We'll call it area zero. Why not? Um, we're going to then have a what are the networks within that the other uh, networks within that area so we've got 172.16.1.0 whoops zero and its wildcard is everything in that in that um subnet so that's also area zero oh Hypitis again. There we go. Right. Then we're going to have gonna be the same wildcard network two and network three. Yeah, lovely. So those are its networks up here one, two, and three. One, two, and three. That's fine. And we've got the 10 network. Good. Okay. Now, one of the things that may well happen is we want to minimize it advertising routes out this interface or indeed any of the uh, VIF or uh, the virtual interfaces. So we don't want it sending out information on that interface. So again, it's good practice just to cut down on uh, the amount of um, traffic being sent out by this. There, there's absolutely no need for one zero to get um, any information or 10.2 or 10.3 because it already knows about the 172 networks. Um, that's fine, that should set up OSPF1. Good, so that's good. So now on the, um, and if I come out of that, yeah, there it is. So we can see it's been configured. On our Viata, we want to say, uh, we're in configuration, so we want to say edit protocols OSPF. We want to set an area, it's got to be the same area, area zero, and the networks in here are 10, 0, 0, 0, and this doesn't use wildcards. Um, set area, oh, network. Okay, and we've got a 192 with a 24, 1.68.4, slash 24, we've got two, and we've got three, okay. Yep, that should do that fine. We'll commit that. Oh, I'll tell you what, before we commit that, let's do the same again. Um, let's go back into that edit uh, protocols OSPF. And let's do our set of passive interface as well. Now its interface is gonna be ETH1. So we wanna have ETH1 ETH 1.2 and ETH 1.3. Again, it's just good practice. There we go, let's commit all of that. Um, yeah, let's do a save as well. And why don't we uh, copy, run, start. So it's, um, it will rebuild this. Now hopefully that will give us our dynamic routing between these hosts. So let's see, let's see whether it, whether it has. Timeout, timeout, 
Yes, there we go. So it took a little while, but um, as you can see, it's in now. Uh, let's go to PC4. It should be able to ping that straight away because they know about each other. There you go. So it's that simple. Um, I mean, it sounds very grandiose, you know, let's uh, configure OSPF. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, just imagine in this diagram if we actually added another router in here and then connected that router up to this router if it had anything available. Then the machines hanging off this router would dynamically start being understood and available as routes available to these guys should we allow it. Now I haven't got any firewalls in here or anything like that but for the purposes of um, illustration I think it's fair to say that you can see how both statically and dynamically we have set up uh, VLANs, DHCP server and all of this virtually on my iMac here without ever needing to invest in any equipment and we've gone through all the commands etc I'm going to make these documents uh, the document that goes with tutorial 13 and tutorial 14 available on aimandkillian.com so you can download the actual document with with the screenshots etc of what we've just gone through I hope from this you can see how useful a tool GNS3 is um, how useful a tool VBox is and basically how you can start to truly learn about what commands and how to manipulate things and configure things within Viata and indeed within Cisco as well here so that you can start to really grasp how you could develop your implementation within software which gives you complete access to your own dedicated Viatas. My name is Eamon Killian. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope this was useful.